Hey Merfolk fans, I'm Joe. Thanks very much for joining me today. If you'd like to support my channel, please check out the link above to my Patreon page. I'm here with round three of a modern friendly league. The opponent for the third time in a row has won the die roll. This is a good hand. Uh, flashback to the last round against Spirits, where I kept a one land vile hand. We're going to hope, like against Spirits, that we draw a land right on time. Okay, so humans. We get to go straight from Spirits to humans, the two superior tribes in modern right now. So we did not draw a land yet. Fortunately, being on the draw, we get another shot at it. Okay, the opponent took quite a while on their um, second turn, thinking about what they want to do. Eventually, they played out Meddling Mage, naming Path to Exile. So I guess this is an upside to there being more blue vile decks in the format, is people expect spirits and name silly things like Path to Exile. So quite fortunate there. Ugh, okay. So this is threatening to get out of hand because we're, we missed another land drop. And the opponent has been curving out. So let's see how it goes. A rising canopy. So they get to play a three drop if they have it. And why wouldn't they have it? So here is a 3-3 Vigilant Haste flying creature. Now it's kind of expecting Thalia's Lieutenant here, which might just end the game on the spot. It looks like they don't have the Thalia's Lieutenant, so we're just going to take five. Okay, for whatever reason, the opponent waited to my upkeep uh, to activate Vile, bringing in Thalia. I'm going to take my Vile up. Okay, we whiff on lands again. So, um, as you can see, I went straight to cleanup, but there um, was a consideration there. Uh, I could have... Viled in Phantasmal Image now, copying Mantis Rider. I felt like that might give away the game a little bit too much. Um, but if, I'm, if the opponent thinks I'm on Spirits, I don't give anything away by Viling in Phantasmal Image because Spirits plays Phantasmal Image. It might actually work to confirm the opponent's suspicion that I'm on Spirits. Uh, but, you know, I, I couldn't really get around putting Phantasmal Image out now, just giving away what my play was before combat. And there's very little chance that I'm going to have time to play out all of these spells anyway in this game, given the fact that I'm on, stuck on one land and one Aether Vial. So I actually went to discard here. It gives away the game that I'm on Merfolk. But I, I don't think it's a huge deal here. So hopefully the quality of the opponent's cards is going down. They, they play out a Hierarch... Um, So this is inter they're not so they're not respecting Phantasmal Image here in a sense because if they attacked with Exalted with Mantis Rider, um, copying Mantis Rider would be terrible because I would lose my Mantis Rider to their Mantis Rider. But the opponent's getting in with uh, with everybody. It could mean that they have a Reflector Mage, but I'm I'm going to do what I feel like I have to do in this spot and copy the Mantis Rider. Opponent activates Ether Vial, uh, brings in Reflector Mage, which kills my Mantis Rider. Uh, which means I'm going to take two from Thalia first strike, and then five more. Uh, it's bringing me down to eight. Oh, the opponent's got follow-ups. And all right, so they, they play another Aether Vile. So they're empty-handed here uh, with five creatures on the battlefield. They have another card draw represented in Horizon Canopy. Um, we'd really love to hit a land at some point. Uh, so I felt pretty good about drawing an Aether Vial. I mean, it's, it's not another creature, at least. Uh, so I go to play the Aether Vial, and then, of course, catch myself and realize that Thalia is on the board. So we just, we just have to pass again. The likelihood of the opponent drawing another for Reflector Mage right now is quite low. Um, let's see if the opponent respects Phantasmal Image uh, here. Well, again, it looks like they're just getting in. Maybe... I'm at 8. It's a 2-turn clock if they get in with Mantis Rider with Exalted. Not quite sure why the opponent would choose to get in with all these guys. Um, so, a lot of choices here to be made. I could uh, block the Mantis Rider and just get rid of that thing. Uh, but being so far behind on resources, I can take a hit uh, this turn and, and not die. So I'd rather 2-for-1 uh, the opponent by eating one of their creatures. They don't have an Aether Vial on two, which means they can't Vial in Athalia's Lieutenant uh, and make everybody bigger. 
I think the best choice here is Thalia because she prevents me from playing Aether Vial. But I think I got spooked by the first strike or something, and um, I went with the biggest toughness that I could kill. So I, I threw in front of the Reflector Mage and um, probably should have thrown it in front of Thalia. But anyhow, I'm going to take uh, seven more damage from these guys, going all the way down to one. We're on turn five. And at this point, all I can do is play to my out. So I'm going to leave Aether Vial on two. Okay. So on turn five, we drew our second land. Uh, it's not the time to play Spreading Seas. Uh, we're going to want to play a creature. Um, now, I know it might be enticing to play out a Harbinger and then use another Harbinger. But we have to use those guys very sparingly, or very carefully, I should say, uh, during the opponent's attack step, because it keeps them on the wrong foot. They feel like they have good attacks, but then we bounce one of their creatures, and um, in conjunction with lords, uh, the harbingers can actually be pretty good blockers. So I'm going to play out, um, I think, a lord here. If the opponent has something to violin, like a... a champion or something they would have four attackers i'm gonna have three creatures on the board and bounce one of their creatures so even if they have four attackers i should have enough blockers so i'm gonna bring in a lord here and i'm gonna get in a cheeky attack with this mantis rider if the opponent wants to block so be it um but odds are you know they feel pretty comfortable at 18 life i finally played an actual merfolk this game and the opponent did have a one drop, so uh, they probably feel really confident in their attacks here. It still seems to me like they should just get in with the Mantis Rider, right? Because with Exalted, it just eats my Mantis Rider, and then they win next turn. They've got two cards in hand, Vials on three and two, and they're getting in with the whole team, which, again, it's just, it's just bad play, but... You have to be prepared to, you know, take advantage of your opportunities. So here, I am going to Vile in Harbinger, and I'm going to bounce Thalia. Of course, he can Vile her back in, but she's not attacking anymore. Um, if that's the best two-drop he has, it will only trigger Champion. Um, I wanted to get rid of as many creatures as I could, so obviously I'm going to block the Mantis Rider. Um, and then which creature I put in front of these guys is kind of a wash. Um, if he has Thalia's Lieutenant, I'm kind of dead anyway. So I just line up blocks. I thought about it, sort of redid things. Um, I'm just expecting to trade here. Okay, and I do. So he's left with Thalia and Noble Hierarch. Um, he could have done much better just attacking with uh, Exalted with Mantis Rider. Um, but I have a window of opportunity here. We're going to leave Aether Vial on two and probably one of my best possible draws, uh, Trickster there. You know, I'm going to go ahead and say that that was my, my singular best possible draw there. Again, we want to be as conservative as possible with our interactive creatures um, to get as much tempo value as possible out of them. We see a meddling mage coming down. Name's Harbinger. So again, the opponent's pretty inexperienced playing Merfolk. I guess we can, can uh, you know, chalk that up to the fact that there's not a lot of Merfolk uh, in the meta. Uh, so the opponents don't really know what they're doing against us. One plays a land, they're left with one card. And uh, during the beginning of combat, I'm just going to tap Thalia down. I'm not going to vial in Harbinger and bounce her, right? Because that would be hasty. It doesn't... Their combat step is already neutralized. So much, much, much better to bring in a Lord here. Okay, another Lord. Uh, it's still not time to play Spreading Seas. Um, an argument could be made that they might top deck um, a Kite Sail Freebooter, but we lose to that kind of anyway uh, because it can just fly in and get us. I guess we could Harbinger it for one turn. But again, we're playing to our outs, and, and the best out is to establish power on the board and get um, a clock that can just win next turn. So play a Lord, swing for seven, and... Uh, looks like the opponent took it. Um, now we, we have a nice board. He's got no flyers, and we've got a Harbinger up with Spreading Seas, a possibility next turn. Now I've been at one life for three turns now. 
Opponent just getting in with Thalia, finally using Exalted. Don't know why he didn't do it earlier. Thinking that I'm going to have to chump with a Lord here. Fortunately, I have, Har have Harbinger in hand. Now, I could just block the Thalia, but it seems much, much better to me just to bounce her. Now, of course, if I block her, um, he could bring in Thalia's Lieutenant. Um, she would win with First Strike. Um, Bouncing her means she can just replay her, in which case I couldn't, I can't play my uh, Spreading Seas. In the end, I just choose to bounce her. Um, I, I, the opponent could also have a Dismember to kill one of the Lords. So he has a Champion of the Parish, and now we know he has the Thalia in hand. I don't know why he's not putting her out right now to prevent me from playing Spreading Seas, but again, I'm just guessing that the opponent is fairly inexperienced with the Merfolk matchup and doesn't know what he should be afraid of. Um... I drew an island, so even if he did put Thalia back out, I could resolve Spreading Seas. And the opponent scooped at that point. Uh, so even if the opponent had a Reflector Mage at that point, um, he could bounce one of my Lords. Uh, I could just vial it in and um, still attack for 11. If he had bounced like a Trickster or something, I'd be getting in for 10. So uh, I don't think he had outs at that point. If he had Dismember uh, for one Lord, he'd go down to 4 and I'd get in for 6 with Island Walk. So... Uh, I guess a path would be decent with Noble Hierarch, but uh, that was a pretty sensational game one. Uh, I was stuck on one land for f for five turns or something, and the opponent had uh, Mantis Rider, Reflector Mage. We got fortunate that he that he named the wrong card with the first Meddling Mage, and also named the wrong card with the second Meddling Mage. <sighs> wow! So we managed to get there. Uh, let's go ahead and look at game two and the sideboard. All right, hey guys, back for game two. Check out our sideboard. Huh. All right, so we took out three Regeries and one Master of Waves, just trying to lower the curve a little bit in the matchup. If we get stuck on lands again, these guys are going to be impossible to cast. And we brought in uh, four interactive spells, two uh, Echoing Truths and two Dismembers. Cut two Spreading Seas uh, because we do have the go-wide plan of Master of Waves. The fact that the opponent has Aether Vial means it's extra hard to um, disrupt their mana. They also have all these rainbow lands, so disrupting humans' mana is, is typically very difficult. Um, the other two cards I brought in were two Tidebinder Mages, which are really excellent in the matchup. So two Dismembers, two Echoing Truths, two Tidebinder Mages, really, really strong additions. And the only things I could think to uh, trim were, were good creatures. Um, I'm definitely I'm leaving in all four phantasmal images because they can copy reflector mages, which are which is a blowout against them. Uh, I can copy um, mantis rider. There's plenty of good targets. So opponent's going to be on the play as always, um, and this is picture perfect. I, I could deal with one less vial, but it means that um, it's resistant to I guess. Um, Rebooter, but I'm going to get it down on turn one anyway. The opponent has kept seven and no vial for them, uh, which means tempo wise, we're going to be pretty solid this game. Okay, we could play out a vial. Um, now, hoping to dodge uh, Rebooter here because we like our vial and our spreading seas. All right, so opponent uh, choosing to lead with champion when they had double vial. Um, just, just poor, I think. Uh, all right, so drew a land. That's actually quite nice. So uh, the opponent kept seven, and they've only got three cards left in hand. Um, they must have at least you know one or two good cards in their hand, but we've got uh, three excellent cards in our hand, and it's really all about careful decision making at this point. Bouncing the champion would just be silly here, I think, because. He could just uh, get viled back in next turn. We're hoping that, you know, they don't have... If they have a handful of one-drops, you know, that's kind of good for us, right? We'd rather have one-drops to deal with than Reflector Mages and Mantis Riders. So, um, totally not threatened by this champion right now. Even if he plays two more creatures and champion hits us for three next turn, it's, we're going to be able to deal with him later. Um, and better to bounce him once he's gotten a bunch of counters on him. Trickster's obviously not good now. Uh, Tidebinder Mage is not good now. Um, I think this is... the Great situation to get Spreading Seas down before free, uh, like a free border can take it out of our hand. And we drew a Lord. So we're going to take beats for, uh, for this turn. Hopefully they're j it's just not a lot. 
Odin has another land. Okay, so that explains a little bit better why they kept uh, this interesting opening hand. Doesn't explain their sequencing very well. Uh, it does explain why they kept. So, as you saw, we only took two that... Oh, no, we took five that turn, but we only took two from the Champion of the Parish. So this is where our interactive creatures are going to be able to start shining. Ether Vial's on two at this point. We drew another Spreading Seas. Not super necessary. Um, but I think we can just pass here. I think the play is to trickster this guy, Tidebinder, the Mantis Rider at the beginning of combat, um, blanking their attack step, and then during our next turn, uh, if we want to, we can Harbinger the Champion. Oh, but we do get to play our Aether Vial, uh, since there's no Thalia out right now. Okay, so opponent ticking up both Aether Vials to two. At the beginning of combat, as I mentioned, we're going to Trickster the Champion, Tide Bind, the Mantis Rider, and yeah, their attack has been blanked. Okay, again, their card quality is starting to uh, diminish. They have to hard cast a Noble Hierarch, and uh, they're down to two cards. So we'll leave this Aether Vial on two, pick the other one up, drew a Regery, which allows us to use our mana really efficiently, and it's time to start attacking. Uh, they don't have an, a Vial on three yet, which means no Reflector Mage to be worried about. The opponent takes 6, it's 14 to 14, uh, their Mantis Rider is still tapped down, so we're blanking it for at least 2 combat, so you can see how strong Tidebinder Mage is in the matchup. Opponent uh, makes his land drop, goes to get in with Champion here. Now I could Vile in Harbinger and try to eat him, or not eat him, but, uh, but trade with him, uh, but I think I'm just going to bounce him. Uh, being able to blank their attack step is pretty awesome, and there's no reason for us to trade resources right now when we've got access to Island Walk. Okay, so uh, plays back out the Champion of the Parish and passes the turn. We're going to take our Aether up to 3 and 2. Uh, Silvergill is decent. Um, we have an opportunity to make a pretty cool play here because if the opponent is representing... Well, the opponent is representing a Reflector Mage here. The thing we'd least like him to reflect, I guess, is the Lord of Atlantis. Um, if we cast the Lord of Atlantis, use a Regery trigger to tap the Vial, before the Lord of Atlantis has even made it to the table, the opponent will have to activate their Vial and bring in Reflector Mage. Um, so the opponent will not be able to reflect the Lord of Atlantis. Even if he does, uh, we can always just put it back out with Vial. But I think I'd prefer to use Vial for Silvergill Adept. See what I draw. Another island. Doesn't hurt. It means I can run out another Spreading Seas. Okay, Mutavault um, would be a good land drop, but um, we need all of our blue sources uh, this turn. I'm going to go ahead and make that play that I was talking about. Target the Aether Vial. Opponent sat for a second and thought... Decides to activate. Doesn't really have an amazing target, but to me it seems like the best target would be um, Tidebinder Mage, because then he could attack with the Mantis Rider. Odds are he's not going to have lethal next turn. But he chose to target Regery, a little bit strange because I've got the Vial up on three. So I'm going to get him with Island Walk for 9, and there's no reason not to bring Regery back in now, so the opponent's going to actually take 12. Um, oh, it looks like he has a 2-drop to play here, and it's a good one. It's Thalia's Lieutenant, so um, potentially a another reason he should have uh, bounced the Tidebinder Mage. But again, I don't know if he would have had Lethal. Uh, doesn't have Evasion apart from the Mantis Rider, so... Um, if push comes to shove, I could have just chumped with with uh, Silvergill if I was going to take four, three. Yeah, the opponent doesn't have a big enough attack here, unless he draws into another Thalia's Lieutenant. Yeah, they just scooped at that point. So uh, yeah, Regery has been pretty useful so far uh, in this league with, with all the tapping and untapping stuff that he's been doing. Uh, it was really useful against Spirits and proving useful against humans as well. Obviously, uh, Harbinger and uh, Merfolk Trickster pulling their weight. Uh, we would not have been able to win these games if not for those two cards. 
Um, do you guys should be playing four of each of those? And yeah, uh, so far in this uh, league, I have not lost a game. Just 2-0, 2-0, 2-0. I think it was blue-white control, spirits, and now humans. So please leave your thoughts down below. Let me know um, what you thought of uh, this match. And uh, if you haven't subscribed already, please do that. I appreciate it. And please check out my Patreon page. I'll see you guys in the next video for round four. See you there.